everybody, it's Renee Regeer from free to be Talks. We are here with another segment of Body Talks, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Body image is complex. We have been saying this all along, but making change doesn't have to be because we can make small incremental steps to start having change. Having raw and imperfect conversations is part of that process, and that's what we're doing exactly here in this series called Body Talks. So expect real and raw from us. Today I have with me Marvin Legensad, who is a professional dancer. He works at a, start, a tech startup company in, um, on the marketing team and is also the diversity and inclusion champion. Marvin, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hello, yeah, thank you so much for having me. So let's just dive right in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so tell me, first question, about yourself and your body image journey. Yeah, um, so I, uh, I guess a little, little introduction to me, I grew up uh, pretty much here in Vancouver. I mean, I was born in the Philippines. Um, but in terms of my body image journey, I, I mean, I was always the chubby kid in school. I was always a chubby kid growing up every time at your family gatherings, everyone's pulling at your cheeks. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like I have a pretty standard story. I was bullied a lot in school um for for so many different reasons but definitely one of those always being again like the, the chubby kid um on the sports teams and everything and so um i it's always it's always been there i think that that question and that kind of um self-confidence or or lack of i guess um in my earlier years um was always there uh it was always kind of right in your face um, always comparing yourself to other people and kind of always wondering especially when you're younger like what is what is wrong with me, I guess, or like, what is going on? Um, what is different about me? Um, and so uh, I guess my, my journey started the day I was born. <laughs> okay. And then uh, <clears throat> you've had to so t- talk about some of your struggles. And yeah. then was there, was there any changing point for you about how that narrative in, inside started to shift slowly? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it started to shift um, I would say it's had multiple shifts. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say when I first started high school, I think um, is when it maybe started shifting more towards the negative. Um, I have two older sisters. um, And so, um, you know, seeing them get ready for prom and and kind of seeing this more, I guess, pop culture um, in being lived in my day-to-day life, um, you know, seeing them like working really hard to to fit into dresses and, um, you know, being exposed to more of like that, that older, um, community um, was when I started really taking a look at it and I was like oh I'm, I'm going into this new and scary thing um, of high school and I've, I'm going to be subjected to probably more um, more people and more opinions um, and so it definitely I would say shifted for the negative um, when I was starting high school but shifted to the positive side when I uh, entered university I thought it would be the opposite I was like oh this is going to be even scarier this is going to be even worse but um, I think when I started university I went to SFU um, I just, I found, I was lucky enough to, to be in a community of people um, that were, were more, I think I saw more diversity. I saw more mm-hmm. different body types. I saw different um, people. I was exposed to, to different people um, uh, because I, I was on the cheerleading team at SFU. And so being, um, being there, I think really helped shift my perspective on, on body image as a whole for the positive. Can you... Um... Tell us now then, because it's been a long time you talk about your body image. Yeah. And as a young child, it's been a big journey for you, understanding yourself, starting, especially university, being a pivotal shifting point where you see, you saw more bodies being represented and Mm -hmm. um, being seen as valuable. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's what I'm hearing when you're saying that though. hundred percent. And to now, can you tell me about maybe that journey or that, that transformation that, you know, has probably continuously ongoing, but what does a hard body image day look for you now? Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe it's not a day, maybe it's moments, but what does it look like and how do you deal with it in a healthy way? Yeah. um, So I would say I definitely have a lot of, of hard body image moments um, and days. I think the moments lead to days. (laughs) Um, I mean, I think in particular one that I can really think of was um, I got fitted for, for a suit um, for my sister's wedding. And I think that was a, that was a tough day, um, having to stand in front of a mirror and having someone, um, basically take measurements all around your body. And I think I have a lot of those moments, you know, if maybe you're, you walk past the mirror and, and it's a particularly unflattering angle or, um, 
you know, sometimes after getting out of the shower and you just look in the mirror and you're like, you know what, like this is a tougher day than usual. Or, um, I mean, especially with, with COVID happening and uh, taking a lot of work meetings online and being in front of the camera every day, um, you have a lot of those moments where you're like, wow, that's, that's, is that really what I look like? Um, and so those, those moments can be really hard because it kind of just, um, those moments do turn to days and you can kind of uh, really spiral um, when you start having those negative thoughts, when they start creeping in, like it really, it definitely snowballs. And so, um, I mean, in terms of how I handle them, I think I, I think I approach them similar to how I'll have bad days in, in a lot of other areas of my life. If I have a bad hair day, if I have a bad day at work, if I have, um, you know, a bad day in the dance studio, or if I have a bad day anywhere else is I think I just, um, I try really hard to acknowledge it as that, as you know what, this is a bad day, this is a bad moment, but that doesn't necessarily um, equate to this being a bad reflection of me or that I'm necessarily bad or that there's anything about me that's negative. Um, and I think I, I try to level myself that way that um, I think it doesn't necessarily equate to my entire being. And it's just, it's one aspect of me. It's one aspect of my life. And um, there are days that I have great days. And I think it's, it's being able to, I think, acknowledge and, and ride that wave. And um, I guess really re reflect on, on how it makes you feel and, and how, um, I guess, where those thoughts come from and, and yeah, being able to acknowledge it in order to kind of move forward from it. Mm -hmm that self-reflective piece has been a large um, player in a lot of the conversations that I've had with people about first just having the awareness to understand where these, what's going on, acknowledging these thoughts and then kind of mm. dissecting the different layers of them. It just sounds like something that you're talking, what you're exactly what you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. How would you say that, um, are there certain things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis now that help you become more um, resilient or that help mm -hmm. you stay strong or that help you defeat some of those body image moments um, more now than you know when you were when you were younger yeah um this might kind of sound uh, a little, this might start off a little bit, almost sounds irrelevant, but one thing that I do every day, and this is more just a, a general um, ment state of mentality, I guess, for me is every morning I, I make sure to make my bed. <laughs> and this it sounds very minimal, but um, every day, every time that I make my bed, um, I give myself that constant reminder of I'm going to be better today um, and I'm going to consciously have a better day today. And I think that kind of helps dictate um, just how I'm feeling. Um, I think, uh, I think I just really try to level myself out um, in terms of um, things that I necessarily do. Um, in terms of my body image uh, as a whole, I think um, you know if I if I want to have ice cream after lunch, I'll I'll do it. Um, and I think I I just I let myself. I, I think I, I do what makes me happy and I kind of gauge the different things that I do based on how I'm feeling. If I'm having a particularly hard mental day, um, then maybe I won't be harder on myself in terms of, okay, watch, maybe watch what I have for lunch or, or maybe I should go for a run. And I think um, it all just comes down to how I'm feeling as, as a whole and how I'm feeling as a human being. Um, because I think at the end of the day, it, it can, that in itself can snowball as well. Like if I wake up and I'm having a harder day um, and then I'm trying to force myself to do all these things, um, it can feel worse. And I think it's, it's being able to respect ourselves um, in our core um, first, like how, how, how am I feeling um, throughout the day? And is this a moment that I should be pushing a little bit more um, to, to be healthier or whatever it is? Um, or is this a moment that I should give myself because um, you know what, this can make me feel better. And maybe this isn't really something that I need to be thinking about right now. Um, should my focus be elsewhere? Um, so I'm not sure if that entirely answers your question. Um, I think I try to live, um, I think my answer to that would be, I just try to look at everything really holistically, um, if that makes sense. I, I, well, again, what I hear you're also saying though too, is you're, let, you're, you're listening to your body and yes. you're, you're trying to listen to your body, engage where you are. And then if you notice that things are harder, you're actively working to have compassion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Does thank that, you for <laughs> yes. Thank you for wording that much better than I did on my. I think, I, I think we were both getting there. I just, yeah. uh, but I heard the compassion really come through, um, yeah. and trying to acknowledge where you're at, and acknowledging that not every moment is going to be the same, and some moments you may need more grace with yourself. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, are there certain things that you really feel or think that people can do on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. that helps them protect themselves, that helps them uh, get to a point where they can, you know, it, it, I think it's unrealistic to be like, I love my body all the time because, you know, our bodies are changing. They're meant to adapt and change. And as they change, they are, that's different as, Mm -hmm. you know, it allows us to experience life differently. Yeah. And so I think that there are things that we can do on a day-to-day basis that, you know, continue to help us shift towards that appreciation or respect towards our body and have Mm -hmm. that mindset. Um, Are there things that you would recommend that things that you have, that you think people should do on the day to day basis to protect themselves essentially? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that I do um, internally is anytime that I'm having one of those, um, if I'm having a day that I'm feeling particularly down about uh, the way that I look or the way that I feel, um, I, I'd remind myself to love a different part of myself. Um, if I'm looking at a dance video and I think that I, I look bigger than I usually do or I'm, I'm feeling particularly insecure about maybe what I was wearing, um, I'll, I'll think about something else in that video about myself that I love. And I think I, I do that in my day to day as well. If I'm feeling down, I'll, I'll think about um, other things that I'm grateful for. And so I really mm-hmm. try to practice gratitude. Um, again, because I, I try to, uh, I look at my body image as uh, one part of me and not my entire, my entire being. And so, yeah, when I'm feeling down about one area, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll do my best to be grateful for something else. Um, I think in terms of practicality, um, one thing that stands out to me is a lot, uh, stands out to me a lot is the, the social media and just the general media that we surround ourselves with and, and being really aware of how that affects um, your state of mind as well. Um, I mean, it's, I feel like there's so many conflicting views when it comes to being exposed to, to fitness models or, or just regular models and, and, and the body image, um, uh, I guess, standards that are imposed there. And I think it's really knowing how um, those can affect you. Um, to some people being exposed to to people in you know in gyms and shirtless or or whatever in bikinis every day um, can have a really negative effect on on the way that they think about themselves. Um, but inverse, it, it can be really inspiring to some as well. And so I think in terms of um, steps that can be taken is to to I guess reflect inwards of um, how does it make me feel when I see this on my social media feed? Does it inspire me to to be better, or does it make me feel worse? Um, and I think that you know maybe certain certain people or certain influencers um, might also make you feel different. Um, and so that's one thing that I really did was I, I took a look at who I was following and, um, you know, every time that I scroll past something, how does that make me feel? And if it, um, you know, has a regularly negative effect on my, on my mental state, then I will unfollow them. And it's um, mm-hmm. kind of a being able to almost look at the, your internal criteria um, and reflect on, yeah, every time you look at something, um, how does it feel? Yes, no, move on, I guess. Yeah. But that it's that what I hear is that like that piece of being able to, it's about reflection piece and then follow through and following yeah. through with it. So you notice the negativity, you notice how it's impacting you, and then you actually make a decision to do something about it. Yeah. Whether you're going to continue or not continue. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I ask you a question about dance? How has dance yeah. impacted um, your body image? Uh, dance is hard. Um, dance is definitely hard, um, especially because uh, I think one, you're, you're around a lot of people every day. And um, I think two, externally, people hear that you're a dancer and they expect you to look a certain way as well. Um, and I think um, uh, I would say this is an interesting one as well, because I've, ha- I've had a number of these conversations too with, with um, some of the women that I dance with. And it's nice to see, um, you know, when you see dancers on tour is, is they're starting to really open up that door for a wide variety of different bodies to, to be represented. Um, but the same can't really be said for, for men. Um, you know, you don't often see um, that you don't hear that conversation happening and you don't really see that conversation happening. Um, and so dance is really hard. Um, I think it's also an area that I think subconsciously, um, you know, teachers and choreographers and directors, um, I think it's something they subconsciously play into, but don't really understand the effect of what 
they do, whether that's putting together a piece and, and maybe you put someone with a, a larger body in the back or um, always trying to compare body types so that you're um, making sure that your, your choreographer is, is, choreography is, is mirrored um, and, and whatnot. So it, it's definitely really hard. And I definitely think that there's a lot more that can be done as a community to make people feel more comfortable and to make people feel um, more celebrated, I guess. Um, and I think that that's a big thing for me too, is it's not just a matter of, um, well, you're allowed to be here and we're inclusive and we're inclusive of all body types. Is It's not just that, it's it's about the celebration of it too. And it's about celebrating people in different bodies because um, you can say that you're inclusive, but how are you making that specific person feel if say you're throwing them in a the back corner or um, you're maybe not being entirely inclusive of those body types when you're thinking about costumes um, and things like that. So um, it can be really, really hard. It really can. <laughs> yeah. Has that, has there been any experiences with dance? So that, that makes, so, that makes a lot of sense about what you're saying. Um, and what you're talking about are almost like the, the what I imagine the support, like the, the, the setting the stage for the dance, you know, whether you're taught costumes or the choreography and whether things mirrored and excuse me for being super naive. I don't, yeah, I don't know much no about worries. dance. No worries. What about, what about the actual dance? What about actually dancing, like the embodiment of dancing? Mm. What is, has, has that impacted you at all in, uh, yeah. in your appreciation or your right. um, understanding of your body, the actual yeah. movement of dance? Yeah. Uh, so uh, in terms of that part, it's, it, it's been exhilarating. Um, that's the part that I really, uh, that I continue to love and, and is one of the reasons why I, I continue to dance is it really is, it's a moment that you can, um, I don't want to say be someone else, but it's a moment that you can play a character. It's a moment that you can really escape from, um, you know, the real world, um, and yeah, it's exhilarating to be able to move and to be able to um, execute choreography and groove and kind of just really enjoy the moment. Um, I think it's in those moments that you feel like everyone is equal and everyone is kind of in this community together. And everyone's in the studio together. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think it, it, it's one it's one thing that's really kind of helped me find that confidence. Um, and I think if I, when I really look internally at it, it's because I focus on the dancing and not what I look like, if that makes sense. And it, it's more so, um, you know, if someone um, comes up to me and they're like, oh, like you're, you're, you're a great dancer, you're, um, you know, I, I, I love when you do this, or like, I love watching you, um, is it's not because they necessarily love the way that my body looks, but they love my presence. They love um, my intention. They love my character. They love the holistic side of me. And I think that that's what helps me really um, take dance and use it as a way to feel my confidence. Because again, they're looking at you as a whole, and they're not necessarily looking at how how large your arm looks or what your legs look like or what your body looks like is it's um you're being presented as this whole package of you as as a human being um and i think that that's what really helps me understand that the way that i look is just one part of of everything that i am i guess mm -hmm. on that note one last question for you yeah. if you could rewind time mm -hmm. and whisper back to your younger self i'll let you choose the age of whatever that would be <laughs> about body image, what would you, what would you tell your younger self? Um, yeah, I think I'd probably rewind to, to when I was just starting high school. And I think um, I would tell myself to, to love other parts. And I think that's the part that really um, has helped me is, is to love the other things that I'm good at, love the other things that I do appreciate about myself, um, love the parts of my body that I do really like and that are strong and that um, uh, I do appreciate that. I think that um, dictated a lot of what I did and a lot of the people that I surrounded myself with and maybe the activities and sports that I stopped. Um, and so that's probably, I, I'd rewind to early high school and tell myself, if you don't necessarily love this one part of you, because yeah, like you said, you, you can't always expect to love the way that you look every single day, um, is to love something else because you'll find that. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about love something else, I heard you say two things, loving like appreciating these different parts of your body, but then also focusing on things that you're good at. Did I hear that as well too? Like yeah. things that you're also capable of doing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Just that again is a common theme that people who have really been diving into their own body image 
healing journey and understanding, you know, why they have, why, why they struggled and, and how they've kind of come out of that. That's been a, a common theme as well too. So I, mm-hmm. it's so, it's very, um, it's very interesting to, to hear that just repeatedly again and again as a theme that comes up about almost like expanding your identity. Yeah, absolutely. About who you are. Well, I think that that is, I won't take any more of your time. Yeah, I appreciate sure. you um, coming on with us today and talking yeah. about all things body image in our body talk series. And um, we could talk about this more. I think that you have shared some wisdom, which will be helpful to people. So yeah. thank you very much for that. Of course. Fingers. Hope, hopefully it'll help. <laughs>